everybody and welcome back to DMAD's free series of QGIS lessons. I'm Tim Aubrey and today's lessons are going to be split into two parts. The first part is going to be a recap of everything we've done so far. So we're going to look at um, bringing vector data in, opening the attribute table to look at things, editing the attribute table, um, changing the symbology by values, adding labels and add, adding background mapping as well. Um, it's possible to do the second part of the lesson without the first part, so if you feel this course is moving far too slow because you've already got a bit of QGIS experience or just GIS experience in general, feel free to go on to the second lesson. If not, then I thoroughly recommend you go through the first lesson again just to cement some of the ideas that we've, uh, we've uh, looked at so far. Uh, please do remember to keep liking subscribing and most importantly sharing these videos so that we can reach as many people as possible. Thank you very much. If you're watching from DMAD's website then the lesson files are right below this video. If you're watching from YouTube then you just need to nip over to DMAD's website to get the download files that we use for today's lesson. The website is www.dmad.org.tr forward slash QGIS hyphen lesson hyphen eight. Okay, so I've got a new QGIS document open and using the same method we learned in the other lesson, I'm just going to go into my favorites, navigate to today's lesson, which is already open, and then I am just going to bring in the CAN underscore ADM1 shapefile just by clicking and dragging and dropping like we did last time. And you can see it's brought in the different provinces of Kanda. And I'm going to go in very quickly and I'm going to change the colour. So we actually first we're just going to right click and open the attribute table. And you'll see that we've got all the information here. So we've got the, the name of each of the provinces and territories. Um, and you can see we can, as we run through uh, we've got a mistake where QGIS doesn't recognize one of the characters. So like we learned, we're just going to click on the yellow pencil to toggle editing. And I'm just going to go in and edit that quickly. So now it's got a character that QGIS understands. And I'm going to save that. And you'll see that under the name one score, uh, name one column, sorry, we've got uh, all of our province and territory names. So once I know that, I can double click on this yellow square here in our layer section. And where it says sim simple symbol at the top, I'm going to change that to categorized. And we're going to go for name one. So I've gone to categorize in the top and then under value I've selected name one, which is if you remember where all the provinces and territories were. And then I'm just going to click classify. And you'll see that now we have a list of the uh, provinces and territories, and they've each been assigned a different color. So now if we click apply and then OK, we'll see that each of the territories has a different color. Excellent. For some of us who might not be that well um, accustomed to Canada, we might want to turn the labels on as well. So if we go into the polygon, we can go to the next tab down, which is control feature labeling. And we can change it from no labels to single labels. And you'll see it defaults to name zero, which uh, isn't particularly useful because name zero was just Canada, so we get a load of labels that say Canada. So we want to change this to name one again. Okay. Um, and something that's always worth doing is where it says rendering just here, we want to go and uh, make sure that we show all labels for this layer. Uh, if QGIS has any labels which overlap each other, then it automatically turns them off. Uh, which can sometimes be useful for display purposes, but it's still good to be able to see all those labels for us as, uh, as authors of the map. 
So I'm going to hit apply again, click OK, and hopefully it will re-render with the states, uh, sorry, with the different provinces and their names. OK, excellent. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to add the Google Satellite data from the last uh, lesson. So I'm just going to drag that in again. Okay, and you can see it's taken a little while to render because it's quite a big image. Uh, it's quite high resolution. Uh, but you can see it's dropped in in front of our data. So all we're going to do over on the layers panel is we're just going to drag our CAN underscore ADM one file above the Google Satellite data. And again, it'll take a little while to render depending on your computer. But as you can see, with very little effort, we've created quite an informative image here. It's very easy to tell the different states apart and also very easy to um, very easy to uh, see the different states and know which one's which. Um, actually, you can see down in the bottom right, we have a little bit of an overlapping label. So QGIS by default would have turned one of those labels off. So there we go. So in that very short space of time, we've actually recapped a lot of the things we did. We right clicked to open the attribute table. We brought vector data in. We edited the attribute table. We've changed the colors of the, uh, of the polygon by a, a variable. So we changed it by name and we've also added labels. And then finally, we added uh, our background mapping. Oh, the reason I use Google Satellite is because um, OpenStreetMap was rendering very slowly for me for some reason today. Uh, occasionally that happens with the connection. Uh, but that's it for the first part of this lesson. And the next part of the lesson, we'll look at how we can export this to a format which everyone can use, and not just QGIS users.